Hi, and welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals course. In this module, we're going to be looking at the STARS visual. Now, the STARS visual is a nice way to be able to show kind of a rating system if you'd like. It also has several other symbols that you can use in here as well. For instance, you can not only use the star, you can also use a dollar sign if you wanted, a heart, thumbs up, smiley, calendar, or even kind of an accessibility wheelchair if you wanted to. So there's actually multiple different types of rating symbols that you can use when you're using the STARS visual. One thing I'll mention here is it doesn't really support multiples very well. So if you had, for example, what we're going to show in our demonstration is multiple movies, it doesn't really show multiple movies very well. What you can do is kind of take an average of all those movie ratings if you wanted to, or you can use a slicer to be able to visualize multiple values and kind of toggle back and forth between each of the movies. Now you do have here who the publisher is. Let's go ahead now though and jump into where we can go download the stars visual and then how to get started using it. All right, so our first step here is to go to the custom visuals gallery, which you can find by going to visuals.powerbi.com. Once you get to the gallery, you're going to scroll down until you find some stars right here. That's the star custom visual here. And you'll go ahead and select the star custom visual and download it and save it into a spot that you can find very easily later. You can also download a sample here. Microsoft has provided a sample, or really the, the author, the publisher has designed a sample here for you to be able to test out and see how you like this visual. Uh, and it's uh, got a data set associated with it as well. Now we're going to be using this data set, or a specific data set around movies. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and download this. I've already done it, so you will need to do it with me here as well. But once you have that downloaded, you can then go over to the Power BI desktop, like so. And we're going to start by importing in the custom visual. I've already kind of told you what the data is going to look like. So let's go ahead and bring in the custom visual by going over to the visualizations pane here on the right hand side. We're going to tell it we want to import the custom visual, hit import again and then go find wherever you downloaded that custom visual. So I recommend saving it into a single spot so it's easy to find later. I have one spot here for all of my visuals. All right, so I've now imported that custom visual. I can see it appears here now. And then my next step here is to import the data. Now we could have imported the data first. I've just chosen to do it second in this example. So we're gonna go get our movie ratings data and I'll do that by going up to the get data section here and selecting Excel. Now the Excel workbook that we're gonna be connecting to here you have available to you as well. We're going to be finding it by going underneath the Power BI custom visuals section here. And we're going to go look underneath the data folder and select movie ratings as the spreadsheet or the workbook, I should say, that we're using for this example. So I'll select open. It's then going to connect to that workbook and ask, ask me which one of the spreadsheets, which in this case we only have one spreadsheet, do we want to use. So I'm going to select the rating spreadsheet and hit load. Now you got a little peek of what the data looked like there. I'll show you again here in a moment so you can see what the data looked like. We're actually going to use the stars visual in two different ways, but just so you can see what the data looks like here, we have movie titles, we have ratings, these are IMDB ratings, and then we have fan ratings from Rotten Tomato. And then I have a top score, meaning the top score that a movie can get as far as fan rating is 100. So these, percent these are actually percentage values that you would have out of 100 here. So uh, 50 shades darker only got 9% from fans. Not so different than what it had on IMDB. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to go back over to the report section. And I'm going to bring in our star visual by selecting it, and we'll make it a little larger here. And we're going to start by first looking at the IMDB ratings, which is the field here that's just called ratings. So I'll go ahead and select ratings and bring that into the value section. And you'll see immediately it's brought in here, and it's actually already visualizing it and showing that we have a value of 144.9. Now, what this is doing is it's actually aggregating up or it's summing up all of the values that we have in our IMDb ratings. And what we likely want to do is actually take an average of all of the movie ratings that we have. So it's summing up every single movie that we have right now. But if we come over to the value section here and change this from a rating of a sum to an average, we can see what our average movie rating is. Now, still, there's a little bit of an issue here. You can see that our overall average rating is 7.2, which takes up more than five stars. So it's kind of filled in all the way here. So what you can do with a star custom visual is you can go over to the format paintbrush here and actually increase the number of stars that are being shown. So if I go over to the custom visual formatting section and go underneath star properties, you'll see there's a section here that says number of stars. I believe that's what it's called. Yeah, number of stars here. And I'll increase that to 10, which is actually the top rating you can have on IMDb is 10. You can kind of see a good average of what the values of our ratings are. All right, let's do one more example. So I'm going to go ahead and click somewhere in the background here, the design surface, and bring in the stars visual again. I'm not going to make it take up quite the entire design surface this time. But what I'm going to do here this time is visualize the fan ratings. So what I'll do is I'll bring in the top score is going to be my maximum value. So the highest possible value they can get is 100. And then my value in this case is going to be the fan rating. So I'll select fan rating here. 
All right, now again, the same issue we saw last time, it's actually summarizing these values. So it's summed up the 100% that anyone can get. And I must have about uh, 20 values in here. So I'm going to change this instead of summing to an average. And I'll do the same thing here for the fan rating. So we're looking at an average rating for each of these. So it looks like my average movie rating by fans out of the 20 that I've selected is a 70.5. Okay, so that's interesting to see. Now, the problem I mentioned earlier in the slide deck is I really don't have a good view of what individual movies I have here. Really, really, it's kind of difficult to see that because it doesn't really handle multiples. Whenever you look at the visual, you'll notice here that there is no property for a category so that you can see multiple stars based on the category of data that you're looking for. And in this case, the title of the movie. So what you have to do if you want to see different multiples or different categories of data is you need to bring in something like a slicer to be able to visualize that information. So I can bring in a slicer right here. That's a, a normal visual that you would have inside of Power BI. And I'm going to drop the title, or in this case, it's like it says tile. I'm going to drop tile into the, the filter here. And I can now, uh, of course, I want to increase the text size of that. So I can come bump that up a little bit if I wanted to. That would actually be underneath the item section here. I can bump up the text size. There we go. And now I can kind of toggle back and forth between each of the ratings or each of the titles and see what the rating was for individual movies. So Hidden Figures here, for example, I heard that's a pretty good movie. It looks like an IMDb rating was 7.9. The Rotten Tomato fan voting was 92%. John Wick 2, 89% by fans, 8.4 on IMDb. So it's kind of interesting here. This one had a poor rating on IMDb, also poor rating by fans. Interesting, though, to be able to see that. Rogue One, Star Wars movie, 9.1, pretty high IMDb, and 85% by on Rotten Tomato. I would expect that to be even a little higher. So a nice way to be able to look at and play around with a nice rating-type visual, so it's able to visualize ratings information really well. Now, so far, we've just been using the star, but you do have a few other ways that you can use this star visual, and you can uh, take a look at that by selecting one of them. So I'm going to select the one on the bottom here, the fan rating, and I'm going to go over to the format paintbrush here. And we're going to go look at some of the properties that we have available here. So the first one section that we have is star properties. And if I expand that, you'll see that you have different types of symbols that you can select. The default here is star, but I can make it into a dollar sign. It's kind of interesting. I can make it into a heart. Okay, it's fan voting. Maybe I want it to be a heart. Maybe really because it's fan voting, I'll make it a thumbs up. So I'll turn this into a thumbs up so you, you can see what the fan vote is. It's kind of a typical like symbol there. But you can also have a smiley, a calendar, or an accessibility, which is like a wheelchair here. You can also increase the number of stars. You saw that earlier, so you can bump it up. We bumped this top one up to 10. And you can decide whether or not you want the labels on. So I can turn off the label. You'll see the 85% went away when I turned off the label. I really want that on, so I'm going to leave that back on. You can also change here to show strobe, or stroke, I should say. And uh, what stroke is, is when you turn it on, it basically outlines the figure that you have here. So it put an outline around the little avatar image that we have here. So I'm going to leave that off. No really need for outlining that, but it's kind of a nice touch that you can have. You can also turn on or off the target labels. In this case, I don't really have a target. So if I turn this off, it's not going to do anything. There is no target on this example. I can also turn on or off the minimum and maximum labels that you see. So my minimum label here is a zero. My maximum label here is 100. I can turn on or off those labels if I wanted to. And in this case, I think I probably will because I, I'm going to assume and know that this is out of 100. So I can know that I got 85% here basically. All right, so let's keep working our way down here. Next, you see star colors. And what the star color section allows you to do is actually modify the colors that are being used in the star section. So I can modify the star stroke. Remember, that's the outline of the color. So if I wanted to, I could kind of change that, which we don't have the stroke turned on anymore. So it's not really going to matter if I change the color of that. You can also change the star fill. So if I wanted to, I can change this to red instead of that yellow that you saw a moment ago. Maybe I'll make it blue. How about that? You can also change it to something uh, different if you want. There's plenty of different colors available in there. But you can also change things like the min and the max color. That's the text that I just turned off a moment ago. You can change all the different colors of everything you have available in here. That's all underneath the star color section. Finally, you'll see underneath the star axis, or the star axis, is if you wanted to actually manually adjust the minimum and maximum that you have. In this case, I had that more data driven. You could modify this by typing in a value. So if I wanted to change the minimum to 10 instead of 0, I can come in here and actually modify it. So I changed my minimum here to 10, and you'll notice it actually adjusted it because it was previously zero. It means it brought it down a little bit. You can also manually adjust the maximum if you wanted to. If you didn't have anything data-driven uh, or a column for the maximum, you could kind of pop pass that in here manually on your own. So I could adjust this here, but it might not do anything because I already have data in there. And in this case, it didn't do anything because I have inside the field well, I have something that's being populated into the maximum already, and that's the total score. Uh, last piece of this here, you'll notice you can also pass in a target. If you didn't have a target in your data set, you could pass in a target here. 
Outside of that, everything below this is pretty standard stuff that you would see in every one of the visuals that you interact with. The uh, title, the general section, all these things are stuff that you would normally have available to you. But this is a nice way to be able to interact and show kind of some kind of rating system if you wanted to. Okay. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Look forward to showing you our next custom visual in the next module.